dude, I'm pumped for this thing, it's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it shouldn't do that! <laughs> oh my god! All right, I think we're quite literally halfway through filming season one of Banging Gears, but I met up with this guy, this is James. Thank you so much for coming down and bringing this car, and you're from ACG Automotive. That's correct, yeah. So on the outside, this just looks like a well-stanced, very well set up Huracan Performante, but it's anything but, right? It's a, it's a bit of a sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> so in short, in the back, you've managed to wedge two turbochargers. That's correct, yeah. Okay, so just I just want to give these guys an insight into what it takes, really. Like, what what sort of mods, tunes, uh, trials, and tribulations have you had to go through to make a twin turbocharged Huracan work? You know, oddly enough, on the Huracan and the R8, it's not that complex. The motor's already in the back. You take the rear bumper off. The exhaust is right there in your face. Unbolt the exhaust. You, you know, you have your exhaust manifold, and you have your turbos. You run your lines, your intercooler. We run the coolers all the way to the front, so that takes a little bit of work to run all the lines but then you got to run them all the way back down through the tunnel where your drive shaft is since it's all-wheel drive. So what brand are the intercoolers? So this whole package is an AMS Alpha okay. Turbo Kit. Right. So the turbo kit from AMS includes G35 uh, 1050 turbos, the heat exchangers in the front, the intercoolers, all the piping, the exhaust. So it's a full complete bolt-on system. Okay, so those guys have done quite a lot of the sort of R&D on it. Correct. As it were. And then you guys at ACG have then installed it. Correct, yeah. Right. So then in okay. that respect, we had to put the kit together, mm -hmm. learn the fuel system, run the brushless pumps, the regulators, the lines, the rails. So it's still a fairly substantial job. Yeah, it's a it's a fairly two, three week job. Okay, oh really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a fairly big job. And then from the outset too, I mean, obviously it's, it has a great stance. Is this lowered or adjusted on factory suspension or you upgraded this with yeah so this has got the Novatech sleeve kit on it okay and so that allows us to have an adjustable coilover so we can adjust the height to where we want it nice. so that way we can get the perfect stance of where we have it right now brilliant would you say this is set up for road for track for drag this is just street okay you know? this is just and, a street and the beautiful setup. package about the way this is set up uh -huh. is with the wheel offset the spacing and how we have it set mm -hmm. it looks menacing on the street but it's completely functional at the track but the stance of it, I'm not sure if the camera's like pick it up on it, but in terms of just just aesthetic and just like, if there was such a thing, ro correctness. Yeah. I mean, I love the ride height. It's not too slammed, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that sort of cliche boy yeah, racer tuck your bike. tire. Exactly, no tire tucking. The like arch profile gap from the tire between the tire and arch is like, you know, spot on. What are the wheels? So these are Titan 7s. This is their okay. um, satin titanium. Yeah. Uh, 20 by 8.5 and, and 20 by 11. Mm -hmm. We have the Michelin Sport Cup 2s. So factory size. Yes. Uh, 245s on the front and 305s on the back. And do they have any weight saving advantages over the stock? So the stock Performante wheels are fairly lightweight because they're already a mm -hmm. forged wheel. Sure. Uh, these, I believe, come in at about 24, 25 pounds a piece. All right. So come on, let's get to the business end of this All right. thing. Um, I, I want to see what it's like. Yeah, what is it like <laughs> squashing turbos inside here? So the, the first thing about it is you look at the back yeah. and it looks stock. Yes, right. It so, does. If you, so if you were to see this, you can't really see the turbos. Everything's mm -hmm. nicely tucked inside. We modified the factory heat shield so that way we can up utilize as much of it as possible mm -hmm. to kind of help you know uh, with the heat retention. But the only dead giveaway on this car is the red blow-off valves. <laughs> okay. Cool. So if I wanted to make it a little bit more stealth, I could have put some black ones on there. Sure. But the nice little red accents with the calipers, it just kind of yeah, it just a really splash works. Of color in there. Wow. Okay. So turbos are tucked way. Turbos down are under literally there. Uh -huh. right here. So you can yeah. see them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. And so what size are they? So they are a 62 millimeter turbo. Okay, so not crazy large. No, enough. that's why they spool so quickly. Sure. You know, given this is a V10, so sure. it's gonna help with the spool. Yeah. But 
when we drive this later, you're gonna realize the throttle response is amazing. Interestingly, new cars are notorious for electronic intervention, having ECUs locked, etc. How's that been? It's been pretty good for us so far. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't lost any sensors. We haven't really had anything that has been concerning. And obviously but, adding turbos full stuff, yeah. your torque amount will increase. And it's a twin clutch gearbox in this. Notoriously, twin clutches aren't that great at dealing with torque. Have you had to upgrade clutch or plates or anything like that? So what we did to help with the transmission is it's got a billet clutch basket. And nice. that's what typically is going to break when you have too much torque right. because it's just going to rip it apart. Uh -huh. And then we have the upgraded clutches. Cool. One of the things I particularly enjoyed about it or thought was cool was when you drove in, it oddly didn't sound turbocharged. Exactly. It still has maintained that naturally aspirated tone, which is a trick in itself. My biggest complaint originally when we put the turbo kit on, I'm like, mm. no one can hear it. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you want to go to a Cars and Coffee and, you know, people can hear the whistle and they're like, sure. oh, here comes yeah. a turbocharged Lamborghini, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's very modest. Yes. Um, until you get behind it, then you can hear the turbos a little bit. Right. But it's grown on me. I really love the stealth look uh -huh. where you're on the street and people think it's just a uh, stock Huracan yeah. with maybe an exhaust on it. Until you, until leave them you give them a little bit of boost. <laughs> So have you spent much time with it on a drag strip at all? I have not. So uh, when we do the quarter mile for banging gears, that'll be the first time it's on the drag strip. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the first time it was on the road course. Okay, wow. And then, I mean, interestingly, out of factory, the car doesn't come on Michelins. Have you put those on because you've just had a great experience with them? I'm a big fan of Michelins. Yeah. Uh, I've always ran them on all of my street cars. All right, cool. Well, let's head out on it. Bro. Yeah, you ready for a drive? Well, why don't you take the driver's seat? Let's, hey. Now we're talking. <laughs> Let's go. You know what I love about Lamborghinis is the theater of them. Like before you've even started it. Yeah. It's, I mean, just like look at the interior of this thing. It's so theatrical. Right, so we're in. First traction off. Or Not the first thing I do in a... <laughs> so at the wheels, what is it? About 800. At the wheels? Yes. Traction so 800 off. on our Mustang Dino, I think it was like 806 or 807. Ready? <laughs> oh, I love that. Very, very cool. It's like strangely practical, this car. No, it really is. You know, <laughs> I mean, very... it's outside of the, uh, the fact that it's a Lamborghini, you could literally drive this every day if you really Absolutely. wanted to. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the defining feature is the torque. Yeah. The torque of it, it's almost tangible. Like, that is bonkers, bro. But you can hear it. Wow. So it's got auto shift, so you don't have to manually shift it. You can just let it shift itself. It's just so addictive, manually yeah. shifting, you know? <laughs> you sort of feel like you've- like, That you're a part of that. You're just part, part of the, of the equation. experience. Yeah. I also shift for like no reason at all, just to like just hear it and feel it. I'm also a bit of a nerd for twin clutch gearboxes because they're so efficient, they're so... Really it's incredible hard. how quickly it's able to oh, shift. Man, it's unbelievable. So auto shift, have you left factory auto shift in, in or have you programmed it to match the, the torque pattern of the car? It's a little bit higher right. in the RPMs just because of the power that we're making. Yeah. And that's all with the transmission tune. I know that this is going to sound totally weird because it's not factory, but it feels as if the factory has put a turbocharged kit on the, their car, you know? I mean, you know, you would think if Lamborghini put one in this car, yeah. it would drive like this. Yeah. That pulls savagely hard. <laughs> like that is unbelievable. The pull must be, you must be pulling all day long. Oh, well, it's addictive. Well, that's what I was saying. So like in the morning, you don't grab yeah. your coffee, you grab the keys, but you do a couple pulls and you are and ready for go. the day. Right I'm now. so pumped. It's probably the most alert I've been all day. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a sort of massive amount of lag either. No, it and that's feels... the beautiful thing with having a slightly smaller yeah. turbo. You can feel it coming on, mm -hmm. but it's not like the big tuna cars where it's like nothing, nothing, everything. Yeah. You know, you're not thinking mid corner, this is going to spit me out. It's, yeah. You know, it's sort of there for you. And then, yeah, you know, you, you could be here, keep it in auto, and it will drive like a standard hurricane. Correct. 
I think that's probably the most impressive thing about it is that it doesn't feel like it's been interfered with. Mm -hmm. Does it handle okay on pump gas? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't have to put any high octane in it as such. Or, I mean, just uh, 91 octane. Sure, yeah. yeah. Your premium. premium. You know, she is expensive on gas. Yeah, I'm sure this thing drinks with two straws. But uh, <laughs> she is well worth it. You can hear them now just spooling up in the background there. Yeah. It's just effortless, man. Like the torque under your foot. I mean, you guys can't really appreciate this, but I'm feathering it right now. Yeah. And then you're just riding this like wave of energy under your right foot. Yeah, it was like, let me go, exactly. let me go. Yeah, it's just, it's just got so much effortless power. One thing I would say about a stuck Huracan is obviously the V10 is, is awesome, but you're typically getting the performance out of it up the rev band. Mm. This has got so much available torque yeah. down low that my foot is brushing it. All right. We're gonna pull from third. Okay. Okay? Let's do it. <laughs> wow, we better back off. That is all kinds of speed. That is all <laughs> kinds of speed, brother. Wow. Honestly, this is definitely in the hypercar territory of speed in terms of straight line pull. Yeah. It is that, it is that fast. I think what's fantastic, again, you know, with tuner cars, it's all well and good having this performance on paper, but being able to translate it to the asphalt is a totally different thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then between shifts, because it's twin clutch box, there's like no delay, no loss of momentum. It's just yeah. linear, massive amounts of pull. Yeah. Dude, I'm pumped for this thing, it's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it shouldn't do that. It shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, man. These Mexican roads are great. Oh, they're they're, they're amazing. They're so smooth, you know? Yeah, big thanks to the Mexican government for yeah. buying us down and closing that road. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so what sort of uh, boost pressure is this running currently? Seven pounds. Is that it? Seven pounds? That's oh. terrifying to hear. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even getting started. No, we are just getting the ball kind of rolling down downhill. Call me when you're at 10. Because I want to I wanna come see. I mean, I'll, objectively, I mean, the goal would be to get up to 16, 18. Really? Yeah. Okay. Keep in mind, we're going to keep it stock motor. Sure. And okay. so, but you know, a stock motor twin turbo Huracan now could be 1,600 horsepower. Right. Yeah, you've probably got more issue dealing with the power through the transmission, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's when you start worrying about second gear and various different sure. transmission yeah, components. Yeah. All right, man, we'll, we'll head back. But well, that was really enjoyable. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Very, very cool. You I'm glad you got, got to drive a, it. You, you got a great build here, dude. <laughs> All right, and we're back. We are back. LZ, you gotta, you gotta try this thing, man. You gotta try this car, it is wild. Absolutely mental. Seriously? Man, honestly, I, I gotta give you props. <laughs> this guy builds a hell of a car. Um, I think to summarize that, it is the best parts naturally aspirated and turbo combined. I know that sounds like obvious like and weird. Like right? Yeah. But, but you still have the NA tone of the V10 yep. and got this massive, like, otherworldly punch of a turbo car. Yeah. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's so, so good. Uh, go and give these guys a follow. I'll put a link below in the description. Really, thank you so much. No, I really no, appreciate no, it. No. Quality build. Alrighty.